what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now And get in that car Leave a little note And we'll drive real far Let's get out We can leave this city Let's drive to the open air Yeah, the country Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. My name's Leslie. Welcome to my kitchen down here on the farm. Today, we're going to make something that I've been promising you guys and I've been talking about a lot and I don't think I've ever done a video on it, but we're going to do my fried cabbage. It is absolutely delicious, like delicious. So, um, I was going to do the whole supper and share the whole supper with you, but I think what I'm going to do is just share with you the cabbage today. And then tomorrow, bring you back for the fried pork chops. Um, just because they're both such a star, I don't want to take away one from the other. So um, tonight's video is going to be on the fried cabbage. Tomorrow night is going to be on um, the fried pork chops. So, but I will go ahead and tell you, I'm doing something for the first time. I'm cook. I'm not. I've. <laughs> I have cooked pintos many a times, many a times, but tonight I'm doing it in the Instapot. I have never cooked pintos in the Instapot. In fact, I'm a little leery of the Instapot, or not leery, I'm not scared of it. I just don't use it a lot. Um, I use it mainly to boil eggs in if I'm doing a lot of boiled eggs. I love it for that. Um, but my friend, Chef Jeffrey over at Ols, um, Ols, <laughs> <laughs> old school soul food. I had the hardest time saying that. Um, told me I needed I needed to really get out the Instapot and work with it. So that's what I'm doing, Chef Jeffrey. Just for you, I'm doing my pintos in the um, Instapot. So if the juice is not thick enough, that what well, that's what I'm kind of worried about is the juice not getting quite thick enough. If it's not quite thick enough, I'll just transfer it to a pot and we'll do we'll thicken it up on the stove top. Um, but I believe it's going to be fine. So I'm going to get my cabbage out and get it chopped and then um, we will get started. Okay, so I'm going to show you from the start. Bryant says that some of you would like to see me even do my prep work. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you um, taking care of the cabbage. Now I have already <laughs> remove the outer leaves. Uh, you just want to take any outside leaves, some of those darker green ones. Um, and I just kind of slice at an angle. Because um, some, some cabbages have a bigger, thicker core, so I just cut down towards an angle. All the way around. And then you'll get to this last little piece and it'll be but you can kind of see where the core you know it's that core is kind of all throughout but that's okay um this is really good to just salt and nibble on okay so i'm just going to take these pieces and i'm just going to cut them into fairly you know I don't know, two inch pieces. Does that sound right? <laughs> okay, and so I'm gonna grab me a bowl here and I'm just gonna put my chopped cabbage in this bowl. And I, I like to go ahead and try to break it up the best I can. You know how they kind of grow in layers. I kind of try to break them up the best I can, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So let me show you one of these big pieces. What I do is I just cut it in half or thirds or whatever you need to do and then just take that piece and cut it down into slices. 
and again put in the bowl separating the best you can all right guys i'm going to finish this head of cabbage up i've got two these were both pretty small heads of cabbage um so i i got two and so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to get these prepared and ready and i'll meet you back here when i get them all chopped up okay y'all i have my cabbage here i really need it in a little bit bigger of a bowl but that's okay i'm just going to take a little bit of whatever kind of oil if it's vegetable oil canola oil olive oil whatever oil you like to use um and i'm just going to drizzle just a little bit just and while it sits in this bowl just a little bit and i mean it'll we'll stir it around once we get it in the frying pan um but I wanted, I wanted to get a little bit of oil on it well, just to be ahead of the game. Okay, I'm going to get the frying pan out. I'll meet you over at the stove. All right, so you definitely want a frying pan that has a lid, or if you don't have a lid, uh, a big enough cookie sheet to lay on top. Um, but we're going to turn this heat on. I've got about half a stick of butter in here right now. We're going to let this melt down, and um, I'll bring you back. Okay, so into my butter, I'm going to put in our cabbage. And you're going to fill this frying pan up. And you're going to spill cabbage all over the stove, <laughs> just like I did. Now we're just going to let that sit in here. Um, if you want, if you need, or think you might want some more butter, you can put some pats on top right now. We'll season this up in just a minute, but we're just going to let it get started and cook down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on for just a minute. Just, it's not all the way on because it's so full, but it'll, it'll cook down. Okay, so I'll bring you back. I'm just letting it sit there for right now, and we'll come back and we'll s stir it up, season it, and I'll show you what just makes it like over the top. That that's just a little something you need that helps this be absolutely delicious. Okay, while it's cooking down, I actually added a little more cabbage. I found some I forgot to put in the bowl. Um, while it's cooking down, let me go ahead and get the lid back on it. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what we're going to kind of season it up with. Now, we will definitely salt and pepper it. You can put hot pepper flakes if you like that. Um, but you're going to need about a half a cup of water. And I like to, um, I think, make it, make it a dirty water. <laughs> and when I say dirty water, I mean just adding something to it. Now, I have many times used soy sauce or coconut aminos to, to add to my water to put in here. That is absolutely delicious. Uh, many times I have used a Knorr chicken bouillon cube or the granules and mixed it in the water and put it in. Um, today, I've opened this and this was in the refrigerator, so I'm actually going to use this. This is Tone's Chicken Base. I use this for our chicken stew, and it's like a gel. And so I'm just going to sit that down in that water and let it soften up because it's cold because it's in the refrigerator. And um, you can see it's kind of making that water cloudy already. It's going to make a, like a chicken broth. And we're going to add that in in just a little bit. But right now, we're just letting the cabbage get soft wilt down. If I need to add a drizzle of oil or a little bit more butter, I can. But in just a minute, we'll put some water in there. Once I can get the lid closed, we'll put this water in there. And oh my goodness, it just gives it a delicious, delicious flavor. But like I said, if you have soy sauce, that is delicious. 
delicious and it doesn't really give it that much of an Asian taste it's it just has like a salty what what's the word and mom um, umami umami flavor you know just that savory All right, I'm going to try to stir this. I'll bring you back in just a minute. Okay, guys, it is so full. I think I need a little help letting it cook down. So I'm going to go ahead and add the water. Okay, I'll add that water and put this on and let it steam down just a little bit. That'll help me get it cooked down where I can stir it. I still have some chicken base down here in the bottom, so I'm going to go put a little more water just in case I need a little extra. All I'm, I did that water so I could have a little steam, but I don't want to stew it, so I don't want to cover it with water, but I needed just a little bit to give it some steam. Okay, everybody, we can see how much it's cooked down. It is really cooked down a lot. So now is where I want to leave the lid off. <laughs> Y'all, I just dumped cabbage out over here. Good thing I could just clean my stove today. Or my, ow, ow. Um. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so what I want to add now, I want this um, liquid to cook off, so now's the time to season it. But remember, you, there was a lot of seasoning in that chicken base, so you don't want to add too much salt. I like a lot of pepper in my cabbage. Uh, I actually like red pepper, but Bryant does not, so I won't add any red pepper. I am going to add a little bit of salt. Um, if you like a pinch of sugar, now's the time you want to add that. We have found, when I would stew cabbage, I always added a little bit of sugar, just a little. And um, we have found that since we've been frying it this way, we don't even add the sugar. This is so flavorful. It is so good. All right, so we're just gonna let it continue to cook down and let that liquid cook out. If it's not, you know, you want it to have a little bit of bite to it, not quite as soft as you would like your cabbage, um, let's say if you stewed it. Um, it's not quite soft enough for me yet. Um, so I easily could put, let me cut my tea off. I easily could put the lid back on for just a little bit. I have plenty of time so I can, but if not, you want to cook that liquid off and you want it to get some brown um, caramelization around with that butter and at the bottom. So um, that's what we're working towards. I'll bring you back and show you that in just a minute. Okay, y'all, it is perfectly soft enough. Um, I mean, because it, it's going to continue to cook um, and I'm just breaking up pieces that um, weren't separated very well. Um, but let me show you. Let's see, I need to put it on something white. Let me get a paper towel. Do you see that little golden dark area? You want several of those in this. Here's another piece. It's just where it's getting brown in that butter. And oh my goodness. <laughs> those parts are so good so I've taken the lid off and there's still quite a bit of juice down in the bottom so I definitely want that to cook off and then after the juice is gone the liquid is gone it basically becomes a, a frying it so that's where we're at now I've taken the lid off we're letting the liquid cook out and it's gonna fry down and it is going to be some kind of good okay everyone I have cooked out all the liquid you can see the liquid is gone and you can see these little dark wonderful bits now if you find that you like those little dark areas like I do 
<laughs> that's my favorite. Um, you can by all means continue just to let it go further. Um, but hey, this is so good. All right, let me get a plate and I'll give you a little taste test and then we'll get Bryant to give you a taste test when he comes in from the farm. Okay, everybody, so let me go ahead and tell you, Bryant and I both were raised on stewed cabbage and we both loved stewed cabbage. But when I started fixing it this way, he looked at me, he says, don't ever stew it again. He goes, this is the only way I want fr uh, cabbage from here on out. It is that good. So let's give it a taste. It's not quite time for supper, so I'm just tasting it for you and Bryant will come in and he'll devour it for you. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Mm. Oh my goodness. And something about sauteing it. You know, I mentioned putting sugar in it. Like, a lot of people put sugar in their stewed cabbage. Um, it is not necessary. This does something. Oh my goodness. Mmm. That is so delicious. I mean, I'm telling you, it's better than any stewed cabbage you've ever had. And you can put in it what you want in it. If you like it a little spicy, then kick up the black pepper or put you in some red pepper flakes. It is so good. All right, don't take my word for it. Bryant will be in it in just a minute. Hey guys, while we're waiting on Bryant, let's check our pintos. I'm like anxious to see because I've never cooked them in an Instapot. So, all right, let's see. Let me get my spoon. I always hit the ceiling thing, even though it's slow released on its own. I still want to use a spoon. Okay. See, there's a reason I use the spoon. All right, and when you open the lid, Always open it away from you. Don't open it where the steam is going to come out on you. Always open it away from you. Like this. See? You got the steam bath, not me. <laughs> well, they look mighty fine. And they look super soft. Let me get a spoon. Well, here, I have a spoon. Y'all have seasoned it up with a ham bone. Oh my goodness, they look super soft. I'm not gonna bite off of this. I'm just gonna take my finger once I get it cool enough. Let me see, let me grab another one. I dropped it right back in there. All right. Now, my juice is not as thick as it would be at, on the stove top, but that's just fine. Just mash up a few of the beans. And they're so, it looks like they're so soft that they're gonna be able to mash. You know what, it seems like I did do beans in the Instapot one time and they didn't get soft, but these got really soft. Mm. Those are so good. I don't know what I did different. Because now that I'm thinking about it, I think I did do beans one time. And I actually did it on video. Huh. Anyway, I'm just stirring these around. And I may turn them on the saute setting just to um, thicken up that liquid a little bit. Let me try that. Where is the saute button? There it is. Okay, I turned it on saute. Let's see what that does. They are perfect. They are absolutely perfect. So uh, when you don't start your pintos of a morning on the stove top like I failed to do today, the Instapot's the way to go. All right, I'm going to um, wait for Bryant to come taste that cabbage. 
Hey, look who's here. Hey, hey, hey. To eat his cabbage. Hey, check out that cabbage right there. Does that lot look delicious? Mm-mm-mm. All right, did you put any red pepper in it or anything? No. Nope. Okay, All right. Sometimes you do, right? Occasionally. Okay. Yep, yep, so. I've already told, I told them they can if they like it a little, yep. a little bite to it. Right. I tell you, you've been doing it this way how long? For several years. Yep. You used to boil it, right? Used to sew it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And you told me what? Never boil it again. <laughs> That's the only way to do fried cabbage or, or cook cabbage right there. Yep. It is so much better than just stewed cabbage. It is so rich, flavorful. Trust me. Mm -hmm. okay. so, the, the grandbabies are in here asking for something to drink. Yep, yep. So, hey, anyway. This, this is a gotta make right here. It is so good. I promise you, you won't regret it. This has been a long time coming. I thought I had this on my channel, but I didn't. So, you're getting it tonight. So, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. We appreciate you guys so very much. And we'll see you next time. Remember, if the grease is hot yeah. enough, you can, oh. <laughs> you can what? You can what, Judah? He wanted to steal the thunder. Go, Judah. If the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, guys. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.